Ladles, blah, blah, blah. That was a rough opening. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL Hasu League. BSL 18 Hasu League specifically. 12 o'clock location, we've got a oh, group B as well. Got to add that in. 12 o'clock location, we got Jess starting as the red Zerg. Bottom right corner, we got Bug starting as the blue Protoss. Bug from France, by the way, if you're looking for nationalities, Jess from Poland. And we got an Overlord that looks like it's heading straight to Bug's base, which should provide some advantageous information for Jess right off the bat. Especially in the mid-game helps track those initial zealots. This could be an interesting one either direction. Jess has been in and out of Hasu Leagues here and there and has had decent showings. It's one of those things where I feel like Jess could make it to the round of eight, round of four, but has not done so thus far. Uh, Bug, on the other hand, I don't know what Bug's ceiling is. Bug uh, has been around, but I don't recall Bug going particularly deep in any of the Hasu Leagues thus far. I will say from the round of 32 play, Bug showed some sparks of life. And so I wouldn't be shocked if this is the season where we see Bug move up to a round of four, uh, or maybe even a finals, we'll see. It's kind of a wide open field this year, uh, or I should say this season of Hasu League. On Apocalypse once again, which I don't think I need to reveal. Apocalypse, kind of a fun map. I think Zergling opener is a little bit stronger on this map. As in the meantime, we do have an Overlord first build. Looks like we're probably gonna see, I assume this is gonna be a nine hatch. Unless we see a pool in just a second. We at least have the, the drones plop down. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be actually an 11 hatch. I take that back. So 11 hatch dropping at the natural expansion. Looks like we have a forge first opener from Bug. Haven't seen forge first as often these days, but it is for whatever reason becoming uh, a lot more standard. Probe is gonna be able to wander out catch that early hatchery, which indicates there will be a fast nexus, theoretically, by Bug. That's the safer play, although might want to try to trap that Overlord, drop a cannon. Drop on a cannon in hopes that Jess ignores that Overlord underneath it, because that could be a kill if that warps in. This could be bad for Jess. Uh, and I think Bug willing to invest 150 resources on that risk. It looks like, unfortunately, not going to pay off. That cannon could still get canceled. Um, looks like it's not going to, though behind this interesting play because the, the usually you will see straight nexus rather than any sort of preventative cannon with the hatch first opener so just actually going to end up with a little bit not a game ending but a, a definite advantage here in the early stages and going for a quick third hatchery before gas as well so going to play very very strong economic opener here and are we going to see a gas immediately after we don't even have zerglings yet so zero zerglings Fielded. We already have a drone that's been shifted over after we've got the, it looks like, 8 drone saturation on the, oops, sorry, 9 drone, uh, let's say that again, 10 drone saturation on the patches here. So wanting a drone per patch to get that usually maximum efficiency for, for Zerg, the lower unit counts. And so just, just going to start surging, yeah, just skipping, feeling zero threat from an initial gateway or anything. Not even going to build a Zergling to deal with that probe. And that's a little bit dangerous because there could have been a cannon rush here at the third base. It looks like a drone is being sent that direction from Jess, maybe to check for that possibility. But in the meantime, Jess already closing the worker gap is well ahead. The natural expansion is just coming up. Cybernetics core has been spotted by Jess in the meantime, but a very, very strong economic opening. And the first Zergling is being produced at the 350 mark. A couple drones scattering right there at the main. One of them going to go ahead and plop down a Hydralis den, and this is as Bug is able to spot it, so it looks like this is maybe going to be possibly a variation of 973. We'll see how it progresses. But usually you don't show this heads up versus your Protoss opponent, maybe feeling the strength to do that because it was a Forge first opener. First sell it being constructed. A few additional Zerglings here going to come into play. That probe still wandering around. We don't have Zergling speed. And we'll see if that zealot decides to march out. It looks like we do have that first zealot. Both zealots actually making their way out. They're going to be able to engage with the natural expansion. Just two versus one as far as the zealot. And that's a winning combination. And the zealot just ignoring the zerglings for now. Going to go up and try to get a drone kill. Nice little bit of micro. The zealot now pocketing itself in a frustrating position. Probe was wiped out in the main. But that zealot getting a decent amount of zergling kills. Thinning the herd to maybe open up something for his brother down the line. In the meantime, we do see, yeah, no movement whatsoever towards anything else. We have two additional drones. So what is this turning into? So nine, 
Nine six, right this second? Am I missing one? Nine seven, nine seven three, official at this stage, but the drone's getting a little bit scattered. Four Zerglings are marching their way this direction. They should be able to get the surround on this. Oh man, opened up the pocket a little bit for the Zealot. And because he's able to, yeah, a little bit of miss micro there by Jess, which is gonna allow that Zealot to actually get a lot more damage. A lot more damage. So that's uh, several Zergling kills already. And now the Hydralisks look like they're gonna be bothered taking care of that whole position Zealot rather than careening towards the front. So now Hydralisks starting to be construct. We have two Zerglings that are still hanging out here in the background. Bug already has forewarning in a lot of different ways to get some of these cannons down. There's the two additional cannons at pretty good angle as well. Although the gateway in the forge will be sacrificed very likely. It looks like that Overlord making his way towards the front to provide some protection against potential DT follow-up incursions. We do see it looks like an exit already. A fourth hatch drop. So this is going to transition to five hatch Hydralisk and just most likely going to go for more of a Hydra contained plane uh, play. Actually, if she had if she had ignored that initial, if uh, Jess had ignored that initial Zealot and actually just careened to the front with these Hydralisks, Jess might have been able to wipe out some of these cannons to start maybe give a little bit of headache. Would have had to go underneath the Groove Spine upgrade to do so, but there was that possibility. Looks like we do have that fifth hatchery. Not part of the game plan, though. Uh, fifth hatchery being produced, so it's going to be five hatch hydra from here. And I presume it's going to be a, we'll see an evolution chamber, movements towards plus two, and try to, uh, an attempted containment on bug to follow. Looks like the, never mind, now the hydra is diving in. I wasn't expecting it at this timing. Unfortunately, it uh, looks like three hydralisks taking some damage. Need to focus on that forge. Kind of the advantage of taking the forge and then go for, going for the cannons is that forces a rebuild of that forge and can provide a little pressure, especially because there's no zealots here on the front. So it's just cannons trying to defend. And a couple of idols not joining, but Jess could now go for some free, yeah, might be able to force a couple additional cannons out if she wants, uh, if Jess wants to just go ahead and pick off a couple of additional. We do have that Dark Templar being produced, but the Overlord already in position to engage it. Looks like there was a skip of gateway. There's the forge redrop. Trying to cut a little bit of a corner right there, recognizing that it wasn't, there were going to be uh, no mutalisks potentially, and we already have a fourth base being grabbed at the nine o'clock location from Jess. Evolution chamber pretty far out on the front as well. Let's see if this Stark Templar is going to be able to make a beeline underneath. Might even be able to get across undetected across this ramp. We'll have to see. Would be bonus if they're able to do so. Instead, engaging the Hydralis briefly, that has revealed there is a Dark Templar out in the field, but it is going to be able to start sneaking out on the map. And that is very, very important for Bug. Having something where you can just create some chaos, maybe kill some drones here at the nine o'clock, maybe take out some drones here at the third base. That's also additional uh, hydralisks that need to be built rather than any additional tech unit or anything else. We are seeing a tech delayer, by the way, in the second evolution chamber. The Dark Templar making its way towards this third base. Currently, are the hydralisks gonna be in time? No hydralisks in time. So the drones are gonna see that it does just have the indicator so a couple drones getting wiped out already. Hydralisk's lazy on the job as that's happening. It looks like they just did some damage, but this is gonna be great for Bug because one of Bug's big concerns here was Jess's early economic play that had just around, I don't know, around the 40 drone marker, which is very, very strong. There's still this, I don't know if Bug is aware of that nine o'clock base to have four bases in control. We have Lurker Tech, so I think this is gonna transition into an attempted Lurker contain. We have a lot of Dark Templar so Dark Templar, a lot of High Templar. It looks like we're going to see an Archon. To so basically going to, okay, if there's a tech switch to Mutalisks, we're going to go for uh, the Maelstrom Psystorm defense. Robotics facility dropped. Forge is spinning. I don't think weapons one finished initially. We're not going to see from either of those units. Yeah, no plus one weapons as of yet. Only a single Dragoon otherwise. So plenty of time for these Lurkers to take the front and play a strong contain game. So it's going to be macro versus macro in the short term. It looks like the upgrades are starting to hum for Jess. Is going, uh, Jess will have the upgrade advantage. A lot of cannons there defensively, but the problem for, for Bug is not staying alive at this stage. It's going to be, how do you get out of your base? This is a pretty narrow choke. This is a ramp where if Jess filters the Hydralisks up to the high ground, morphs the Lurkers here, it's a, a very difficult location. Just kind of gets kind of a box contain. It's a very difficult... Uh, area to try to poke out of. We do have a spire being sn uh, sneakily dropped at the natural expansion from Jess, so possibly we'll see a Mulos tech switch. Not, pro not entirely sure what we'll see. 
overall. A couple lurkers morphing on the off position, so maybe expecting a, a flood of units, but supply counts are even, which puts Jess in a good position. One cannon being taken out by Bug to go ahead and start wandering out. One big X factor here is just the sheer volume of Psystorm that Bug is going to have. Dropping additional gateways. So this is full production off two bases right here. Actually overproduction on two bases. So this is definitely, I presume, going to be a march out to go ahead and grab a third rapidly. Because this is too many gateways for two bases. You cannot produce uh, enough. Even with a, a bit of oversaturation, that's not enough. And in the meantime, just in a really good economic spot. But hasn't... This is mostly in drones right this second, so a little bit deceptive. Just 40 supply of attack units, so Bug actually about equal on army overall. And also, this is a very defensive army from Jess. So he's going to have to contend, if Bug decides to get aggressive, figure out where Bug's going to, to head. And also, this isn't a mobile attack army, so I don't know that it's into... Ooh, might be able to get that Dark Archon. That would be a great pickoff. Able to pick off that Observer which might make Bug think twice about going for a third, but it looks like Bug is marching up towards that three o'clock location. If they can pick off that worker, not quite able to. Gonna get pushed back by the Dragoon. So one thing is, is yeah, Jess has a nice defensive situation, but with the lack of Hydralisks and mobility, has to cover a lot of territory. And that just concedes a third base to Bug. However, on the flip side of that equation, Jess does have early additional bases and can maybe make a sprint towards Hive and just getting a whole bunch of additional tech and everything else up to really roll over a bug in the late game as far as the macro equation goes. And we'll see if that continues to be the case. Right now, Bug has managed to exceed Jess in supply a little bit, but not in a comfortable margin for this sort of... Yeah, it looks like Bug <laughs> accidentally boxed himself in, but maybe also recognized, okay, that's too many gateways. Right the second anyway. So going to open that up. We do have a shuttle being produced. We got, again, so much Psystorm. And a massive lack of vision from Jess as well. So the drops could be very, very effective. Mutalisks on the prowl. Making their way towards Bug's third. Are they going to be in time to swat down the cannons? It's going to be close. And that might draw the Dragoons. And certainly the Dark Archon back out of position. It'll be... Cl uh, this is interesting, because this is as the cannons are morphing in. If the cannons were already constructed, it'd be like, yeah, no problem. Definitely drawing a large portion of that army back. The worker making its way... Oh, is that... Or come on, Mutalisks. Attack. In D&D, they have a concept called the Attack of Opportunity. That was a massive Attack of Opportunity that was missed from the, the probe right there. Like, nah. We're just going to let that one slide. Lurker is moving forward. They're not yet burrowed, and they're heavily bunched. I think they're recognizing that would have been a killing field with the Psy Storm. So the Mutalisk sweeping back around, looking to pick off the High Templar. Maelstrom, but the Maelstrom hitting the Zealots as well. Psy Storming, wow, bug like no mercy. Forget you, Zealots. You can eat a Psy Storm. You will eat a Psy Storm for the cause. Unfortunately, misrallied overlords on the front as well for Jess, so it looks like they're going to get picked off. More Psy Storm to follow, and there's still, yeah, plenty of Psy Storm otherwise. The Dark Archon did get picked off. There are all sorts of lurkers, but they're pretty heavily bunched up if these Hydralisks get wiped out. This could be a, a devastating follow-up. In the meantime, I miss this. Dark Archon making it a drop into the main, creating all sorts of havoc right there. It got at least a handful of worker kills and also drawing Jess's attention, which is going to open up the Psystorms from the high ground. Dark Templar also pocketed right there. Like, and that Zergling's been sitting there this entire time. I got that... Probe kill early on. It's like, that's all I need to do. Massive. Look at the Psy Storms on that bunched up army. Oh my goodness. Brutal Psy Storms. In the meantime, we have some Hydralists that were sneaking through, running headlong into cannons, just having some trouble with army control, it looks like, as far as follow-up attacks. Do we have a tech to hive? Hive is already here. We have the Adrenal upgrade coming online. Supply count still in Jess's favor, still up overall worker counts. Zergling's starting to flood out mid-map. They're coming from all angles. Lurker's also sweeping up, and that is going to be hard to contend with from Bug. So we're going to lose that outward army, but on the positive, Jess isn't contending that fourth base as of yet. So everything worked out here. The observers might get picked off as an afterthought. A couple Zerglings marching out. They have not yet checked that fourth, though, and it looks like as a result, Bug is going to be able to establish that fourth base up 10 supply. In the meantime, a drone is maybe uh, aware 
the drone knows that there's another base out there. So just pocketing a drone bottom left in corner wants to see how the fights pan out here mid map. The observer is slowly making their way back to the bulk of the army. Adrenal upgrade is just about to finish. We also have the the uh, phenomenon. I guess drop was upgraded first. I was expecting phenomenized carapace upgrade. I saw an overlord upgrade but missed it. We have an ultralist cavern dropping as well. Something you don't see as much in uh, ZVP, mostly because of the threat of uh, reavers and because zealots are fairly efficient. As our archons late game, everything late game kind of goes against ultralisks. But just maybe thinking there's enough of an economic spread. In the meantime, mid army engagement just getting decimated once again. Pl does have actually really nice upgrades to contend with this, but Bug is just ending up with a more cohesive army as the death ball and is rolling over Jess as Jess is coming in kind of piecemeal. In the meantime, it looks like a Heidel's was able to find that third base. Zerglings burrowing. Burrow was upgraded. Burrowing in the bottom right to try to deny additional bases. We still have that drone pocketed bottom left to maybe grab something else. And just starting to flood out the units. Down 20 supplies, so Bug now in a feeling like him there was a better situation. I think that Dark Templar got wiped out. Still 52 drone count. A couple of these workers making their or sorry, a couple of these Zerglings making their way in, discovering that there is a base in play. That should definitely be an indication from Jess that another base is necessary. Instead, just teching up on top of this, we had a greater spire morphing in the midst. So cannons at the fourth, greater spire on the way. The observer able to spot these hydralisks in forward position. Some zerglings denying additional bases. The mutalisks running back out. I guess they're going to suicide into that cannon line to try to see what the, maybe just freeing up some supply right there from Jess. Could be a bit of mist micro as well. But I think Jess's play now is his wait for end game tier units we got the ultralist cavern we've got raider spire maybe the ult the they're trying to get in a pocket location to morph so we'll need some more mutalisks out in that forward location to make that happen hydralis marching up towards that fourth base the main is mined out for bug the natural expansion is just about mined out so it's just two bases remaining but bug has a lot of workers to work with has a pretty has a 30 supply lead the upgrades have continued, plus three weapons just about to finish. And his one honestly got very efficient trades thus far in most of these engagements. So Greater Spire finished. I'm looking for, looks like some additional mules being produced. Bug testing that high ground plateau, not the best engagement point. He's kind of walking through a lot of damage. A nice side storm to bleed off the Zerglings, but still taking a lot of free damage along that corner edge. So a lot of Zealots getting, looks like, bled off. And still a large attack force there from Jess. Another shuttle drop making their way in. And for the Overlord's in position maybe to spot it, though. So Zealot's going to drop in the main. The rest of this army... Well, okay. Three Zealots make it out. The Scourge wipe it out otherwise. Overlord's making their way across. They're going to get wiped out. We have another base dropping bottom left. There's chaos everywhere. The Ultralist End. Unfortunately, all those upgrades finishing. Now the Ultralist End getting taken out. So those zealots, like a SWAT team, really special forces right there, able to make it happen. Bug sweeping around is managed to get on the high ground plateau in between, is starting to poke into that nine o'clock. A nice defensive position if just had the units queued up. It looks like just starting to flood the units now. All the lurkers wiped out. So now this nine o'clock base might get ransacked and wiped out. Massive size storm and honestly a killing field here on the ramp. Look at all of that Zerg blood underneath. Jess's supply has plummeted. The worker count starting to take a hit now. And there's more size storm where that came from. Holy cow. A couple units bleeding out there. I'm wondering if that's a miss rally because the units just keep wandering up here to die on those cannon lines. Just now down to 46 workers. Does have another base up here bottom left. Looks like we have a couple other bases maybe staked out as well. Miss the Guardian morph here at the fourth. And unfortunately, with all that Psy Storm expended, we'll see if there's enough. Well, never mind. I got to say, Bug's been on top of the High Templar production. These Guardians are grouped up enough for that Psy Storm is going to be very, very effective here, potentially. First Psy Storm off, catching three of the Guardians, killing three of the Guardians. But having to reposition, do what they can. The Observer's still able, it looks like, finally getting attacked there mid-map. They are veterans. And also this... Extra base bottom left just starting to saturate for Jess. 
So the mains mined out, and we've got an oversaturation of workers. Nice dodge with the Guardians right there. Unfortunately, the follow-up not going to be sufficient. Also, drone kind of midfield. So the main and natural mined out for Jess. Not saturated as well as previous at the 9 o'clock and natural expansion. That bottom left just starting to take hold. We have two creep colonies being dropped to potentially hold that. I'm going to presume those are scouting zerglings. Observer picked off midfield. Unfortunately, there's another drone to see that, another observer to see that drone making its way to the south. Multiple Archons morph. They do have that plus three weapons, which makes them very, very formidable here in the late game. I would say that would have been a problem should there have been an Ultralist transition. A couple meals trying to run the gap. One of them makes it through to maybe morph it. Yeah, going to morph into a Guardian over the right hand side, cliffside edge. That'll force out a Psystorm Storm potentially. Just kind of hurting as far as the bank goes. Bug actually able to get a good amount of resources in. We'll see if that situation changes as the Nidus Canal is established bottom left and the drones are starting to resaturate bottom left. But Bug on the move, a massive army, Archon heavy, sweeping across. Observer picked off, which is actually pretty significant here because I don't see any other detection aside from Psystorm, which can just drop. Unfortunately, there's not Lurkers out for Jess to really capitalize on that observer pickoff. And so that army just melting. Just now down 60 supply. And this is an absolute brute squad. The Guardian sneaking, gonna eat some Psy Storm over that fourth. Is at least forcing two Psy Storms out, which is something. But I'm concerned that Just needs to hold on for dear life right here. Oh man, the Zergling's getting obliterated right there. Bug Psy Storms have just been vicious absolutely vicious the eggs before they're even hatched are gonna know the taste of lightning which how do you want to spawn like that into the world third base getting wiped out the natural the unitis to the bottom left is going to get wiped out i think the archons if they group up and re-attack could probably wipe out everything all the way to the main the drones getting absolutely obliterated blood and guts galore Looks like a probe trying to make its way to the 6 o'clock is going to get blocked out at least by a Zergling right there. Another Guardian managed to sneak out here. It looks like it's managed to get a handful of kills while Bug's been uh, distracted, destroying the home front. And this is still an army that just needs to worry about because it can just re-pivot and march straight to the everything at the 12 o'clock and wipe it out. A couple additional Guardians out to go ahead and threaten that 3 o'clock location. 9 o'clock is sailing. Bottom left is sailing, so a decent economy to work with. Zerglings funneling in here to the 6 o'clock location to wipe that out. I don't know if Bug recognized that there was drop. Overlords eating Psystorm collectively. They're unfortunately the only defensive units across that natural. It looks like I take that back. There are a couple Zerglings and Hydralisks to try to defend this, but I just don't think it's going to be... Well, maybe it's sufficient. The, everything kind of coming in a little bit at a time and also spread choosing different targets. So a, a lot of additional units getting... Punished, but Bug not able to get the killing blow right there. Hydro's continuing to wander into this top right base and get wiped out, just donating units that way. And so Jess now down half supply from Bug, although Bug's holding just down to two bases. Jess is in a situation where re grabbing the six, holding the nine, and rebuilding everything. If Jess can somehow hold the natural expansion and the main, this is potentially a game-winning scenario, but there's a lot of hatchery production that needs to happen in order to sustain that. And I don't see a lot of lurkers, which would help out immensely here. It's just going to be zerglings. There's no dark swarm support. There's no plague support. So the all-gateway army of bug is extremely scary here. Although, looks like just is able to disrupt your bottom right with some burrowed zerglings. That might confuse bug a little bit. Greater Spire now wiped out, so no, don't have to worry about the Guardians anymore. Might not need to worry about anything else here for a bit. One Lurker spawns, and this is with no Observer. Is it going to... Okay, it does burrow, so that's at least something. But the Hydral is done exposed, the Spawning Pool exposed. This is where the Hive is. I don't see a re reconstruction from Jess at any other location. So if an Observer makes its way here to the 12 o'clock location, that's potentially going to be game. They can just re-pivot, take out that Spawning Pool, and it's just going to be Hydra's production, potentially. Yeah, that's critical building to wipe out. And I haven't seen a rebuild. I haven't seen uh, the high-tech rebuild from Jess anywhere. And I haven't seen, yeah, a lot else to help defend. It looks like the Zerglings are going to be able to clean things up, finally. But the damage 
has been done. A lot fewer hatcheries. There, if you were coming across saying, is this a Zerg colony? You'd say this is the remnants of a Zerg colony. A bunch of zealots waiting to dive here bottom left. Unfortunately, they don't have observer support. Some overlords look like they're going to get taken out by some Corsairs here at the 6 o'clock location. Observer finally moving in. I think Bug just playing, recognizing the spire is gone, just felt like, you know what? Let's throw in some Corsairs and finish this out. Again, the Hydralis just, this is, this is like a, I don't know what to call this. This is uh, some Hydralis who just want to die. They constantly go to the top right. They're like, we're tired of being Zerg. We want to rally the Protoss cause. So we're going to sacrifice our bodies to boost their morale. It's what keeps happening top right. In the meantime, Overlord's trying to make their way bottom left. Some drones making their way bottom left as well. Just needs to rebuild a spawning pool someplace. Looks like just sticking to Hydralisks right this second. Okay, a spawning pool has been rebuilt. Okay, bottom left spawning pool is back up. Gas needs to get recapped though. Bug is expanding. Could probably take the six o'clock. And as things stand, just can rebuild. But my concern is, is by that time, Bug is already gonna have too much of an army to really cope with. And if this army starts swinging to the left, and if those Corsairs start getting active on the field, could be a lot of dead overlords and everything else as well. Singles out marching back across. Looks like there are a good amount of lurkers. It's just they're in the wrong position to help defend right this second. This could be a sad fight again for just more zealots marching out. They're going to find a completely undefended nine o'clock location. In the meantime, the zealots careening on top of those zerglings. It looks like Jess maybe engaging that zealot attack force, but neglecting the nine o'clock. So the 9 o'clock gonna get crushed. Archon sweeping across, and fortunately this almost feels like waking up the giant right this second. Still no observer midfield though. So if those lurkers can just plant, could clean up a lot of this army. And it looks like a lot of the zealots kind of doing a walk around, which didn't help. So now that those lurkers are down and surrounding this, Bug needs to evacuate. Bug still has a massive supply lead, just down to anemic sub-20 drones. And those lurkers unfortunately getting hunted, they just couldn't get their bearings it looks like ticking an additional hit a couple of them fleeing to the left to maybe clear that up now the corsair is going to be active some of these overlords stranded and jet things are looking gross for jess now 3000 gas 2500 gas or sorry 3000 minerals 2500 gas as of uh, before that just got spent left for bug jess is trying to rebuild at effectively another spawn point bottom left and in the meantime, Bug has 150 supply, so three times the supply of Jess. Although Bug donating some units still. Three times the supply, a massive attack force making its way top right. Does it have an observer though? Observer discipline has been very lacking for Bug thus far. Yeah, Lurker is actually getting some free kills. The Corsairs also haven't been active where they've been able to, they might've been able to just sweep around and get all sorts of damage done. Bug wanting to sweep into the main. That hive has been up for a considerable period of time. We haven't seen a... What could have really maybe swept the tides in a bit of this. Looks like some lurkers managed to plant briefly here at the bottom right. Caught the latter end of their lives on that drop. Um, Defilers could have swung something. They could have uh, maybe softened up a lot of these units. Provide some defense against the additional... Dragoons, etc. But right now, we have, even though we've got the hive up, we have not seen. We're seeing another spire, so maybe just just wanting to play the spire, the greater spire game, doesn't have the minerals to do so. And we'll see if that continues to be the case. Running off two bases, bug sweeping back in, rechecking the nine o'clock. Bug could honestly take the nine o'clock if you wanted to. Oh, two shuttles making the way up to maybe drop into the main here, bottom left. Unfortunately, still no observer there, and so the lurker should be able to repel it. being produced. The Corsair now sweeping to the left-hand corner and should be able to, yeah, get, be able to get all sorts of, can just ignore well, it looks like they're going to back up. They could have ignored the Hydralisks and just, yeah, go for whatever overlords are lightly out there, create a bit of panic here. The Zealots, with that distraction, peeling in. A couple lurkers there, so that attack may be a failure before it even started. And for, usually Zalts can just pound through things, but with all the Lurkers, as soon as they plant, that'll be a very fast kill. So I like the thought of this, but without the additional Observer support, 
Uh, it's going to be dead on arrival. Corsairs are frustrating this Hydralisk in, uh, in particular. The Zealot's now marching in. Does just see it, just sees it, plants those lurkers. And now let's see if the. Can the Zealots focus fire things down? They might be able to focus fire down that spire just because they have massive numbers. But that's about all they're going to get. And I, as far as economics, that was at least a full control group of Zealots. I don't know that 1,200 Zealots were worth the uh, spire right there. Uh, just still at not the best worker supply. We got another drop. Dark Archon and a Reaver this time making the way into the main. Are they going to make it out? Okay, they are going to make it out. They're now working on the Hydralis Den and that Zergling. Plenty to, to wipe things out. This could be enough to, to clear. We've got four hatcheries here, though. They're not going to be able to produce anything in sufficient time, though, to save that Hydralis Den. Evolution Chamber, I don't think, means much anymore. We do have plus three weapons that could be here on the way. Queen's not going to get wiped out as well. Queens weren't going to be a factor in this match as well. So, and that Hive uh, honestly hasn't been utilized. The Corsair sweeping across, able to harass some additional overlords in the corner, are going to be able to get those kills. So just now boxed in, bottom left. Bug has not yet taken the 9 o'clock. Hasn't taken top left either. Could do so. It looks like a probe walking out to maybe do that right this second. Bug near 200 supply. And definitely it is Bug's game to lose at this stage. Usually you have the Zerg going after the Protoss at this stage. And right now we have the Protoss just kind of buying time to, to kill the Zerg. Looking to crack. And really the, the key to that is just going to be Observers. Like the, the Reaver, like just attacking with the Reaver and having that bulk of the army behind should be sufficient. Nexus going up that 9 o'clock. Some Zerglings is going to sweep across to try to interrupt that. We do have two Zealots to maybe provide some defense. With Adrenal upgrades, those Zerglings are going to win that fight, so maybe a cancellation. Now the rest of those Zealots are going to march out to the 9 o'clock. This is a very, very uh, fortified base in that bottom right-hand corner for Bug. Has all sorts of <laughs> able to sweep up the Overlord's last second, so another worker going to need to make their way out. The Observer finally out mid-map. That Observer stays alive, that is going to be the key to this entire endgame for Bug. <clears throat> Slowly moving up. Some Hydralis marching out to engage this, but the rest of the army should be able to sweep in and protect them, no problem. I say that, but okay, yeah. Yeah, they're going to get pushed back, and you can probably see more of the same of that. Just looks like they want to take the 6 o'clock base, potentially. Observer near that corner. So Bug, any time now, can just crash down, maybe wipe out that 6 o'clock. Can get it a, a worker out to maybe, gra honestly, could grab a lot of these latent bases. This depleted gas is the only thing of value, it looks like, here in the main currently. Oh! Like I said, that Observer, the Observers. The Observers are the key to this endgame here for Bug. Okay, now the Observer making its way forward. Gonna notice the reposition point. A Mutilus somehow finding that one probe that was making its way across to the 9 o'clock location. The Zelts are not gonna be able to help there. Or the Corsair is gonna reposition to help defend. Looks like maybe not. Are some cannons? A cannon maybe dropping. Three cannons, four cannons dropping. Let's see if that's just donations to these mutilists, though. In the meantime, Bug hovering over that high ground. Greater Spire being morphed again. Just really likes Greater Spire play. Holy cow. Hydralists swipe out. The Reavers are getting a little bit too far away from the rest of that army. Still going to be able to get some decent kills. So one of them getting wiped out, unfortunately. But that's still going to be plenty... As long as the Observers lead to wipe out the rest of that, it looks like now that those cannons are gone, the Mutal's working on the Zealots. Psystorm over the bunched up Lurkers in the meantime. Bug a little bit worried about resource management here. Going heads up against Archons is not what you want to do as unupgraded Mutalists. The Corsair punishing what remains. And that 6 o'clock base wiped out more Zerglings streaming across from Jess, maybe to try to engage this attack force. That Observer able to find those last two Lurkers. The Zerglings trying to stream in. Wow, that was quite the dud. 
couple zealots and an archon being peeled off, which gives them, looks like a favorable fight to engage. That Reaver walking up to get hit. Frustratingly so. The Zelts now marching in back to the main, but again, the lack of observers might hurt. Unfor uh, unfortunately for Jess, well, maybe we got a couple lurkers in position. Mostly the, the assault here is, is on the hatcheries. There's still hatcheries to take out. Bug is actually mined out top right. This location, it looks like the Zerglings have been able to clear out that 9 o'clock. So there is a world where Jess wins this just by surviving off 20 workers. Guardian trying to make the way up. That's not going to happen. Bug might want to try to grab this 6 o'clock. That Guardian just needs to get sneezed on. It'll die. The Zealot's getting cleaned up here at the 12 o'clock. Killed the... I don't know what was planted there again. Maybe another evolution chamber? The rest of the Zealots starting to march out for Bug towards the 6 o'clock, looking for a breach point. This base still running for Bug. Bug can go ahead and grab the 6 o'clock Pure. <clears throat> and we'll, effect we'll sort of have Jess boxed in. Now starting to engage forward. And with the Observers leading, I think this is an overwhelming attack force. Just not enough. Good size storm over the Lurker line. Yeah, Bug finally able to, to crush what's left. And with that natural expansion breached, that should be GG. Although, do we have, no, I was looking to see if that was another hatchery getting re-grabbed there at the 9 o'clock. That Archon having the time of its life, or sorry, to say that Guardian have the time of its life attacking that Archon, unfortunately, not going to be sufficient. Also unfortunate for Bug, not a lot of anti-air, and the Archons are attacking eggs right now, rather than the uh, air units. High Templar are also a little bit exposed. The Zealots marching in otherwise. Still a massive supply lead. The Zealots getting all the way into the main. Zergling spawning in mass. That Archon, yeah, chasing down that Overlord instead of the Mutalisks out here. Psystorm able to clean up what few drones are left. So now Jess down to four drones and has 200 minerals in the bank. And not a lot of, okay, could, could build drones out of the hatcheries at the 12 o'clock but would still need to get them to a dead hatchery bottom left. So this is going to be a bug victory. And tough fought. Tough fought. Okay. See if the 6 o'clock base gets so zero drones here for Jess. And 21 supply. Still no GG though. Fighting it out to the end. True tournament spirit here. Mulesks looking to see if they can deny a 6. I'm waiting to see if a couple Corsairs get produced because that would clean up whatever's left. The shuttle actually exposing itself to the Mutalisks. In between, is that Archon going to make its way forward? So some worker is going to get picked off here at the 6 o'clock location. The Guardian moving out a little bit too far. So it's going to get wiped out. The Zealots and Archons now marching in. There are no Lurkers remaining. So the rest of this is going to get wiped out here at the 12 o'clock location. And there is the GG from Jess. Quite the match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.